But to begin, this is the third of many presentations that we'll be doing over the next couple of months about the project and where we're moving with the project. To begin, I'd like to let everybody know that we're very lucky to have our OPM, Vertex, used to be called Compass, and now they're called Vertex, it's the same firm, and our architect, DRA. And the same firm is the same firm that helped us build Stoughton High School. So we're very familiar with them. We know Tim, we know Dom, we know Allison, Carl, Courtney, they all worked on the high school project, and we're really excited to have them back uh, working for us. And we also have some new people in the crew now. Uh, Matthew Crocker, who's going to be working with us analyzing some of the redistricting options. David Stevens, who's doing some of the educational planning and, and other people involved in landscape architects and engineers as we move further down the line. So we're excited to have the project team together. And a lot of people have asked me what has taken so long to get to this point. Um, following the process, it took the better part of a year in order to get this project team together. So we're really excited to have them together, and now we're moving. We're moving forward into the feasibility study. So before we go into their presentation, I just wanted to give a brief overview of, of how we got here, and really a quick 20-year sweep, if, if I may. So way back from 2003 to 2009, we had an ABA committee here in Stoughton, and it really meant to try to bring all the buildings into compliance. And at that time, all the buildings had some level of door frame, door openers, restrooms, elevators, countertop work done, with the exception of the South. The South School didn't have that work done because what they learned is that there was no feasible construction solution that could be found to remedy all of the obstacles at the South. And so that was exempted from that. And, and that's why the South really is the priority school. Later, in 2010, we had a facilities master plan that led to a prioritization of all the school buildings, prioritizing both the South and the high school. And we put SOIs, that are called Statement of Interest, with the MSBA for both schools back then. And at the time, the high school was prioritized as the higher need and threatening their accreditation and the higher need. So the high school, as you all know, was built and opened in 2019. And the South and this elementary school project was right behind it in the MSBA. The MSBA wasn't surprised at all when we filed the SOI for this project and started to get the project moving. And they have been very enthusiastically behind us and big partners with us. Back in 2021, not too long ago, the Facilities Master Planning Committee revisited the school placement prioritization and ranked the South and the Wilkins at the top of the list of schools that needed work. And we're going to talk a little, little bit later about the Wilkins and some of the issues that we're facing here. What this feasibility study is going to do over the next several months is really have us look at all of the options. We have to look at an option for replacement of the South for uh, what they call a design enrollment of 225 students or the opportunity to go from five elementary schools to four here in Stoughton and have a larger school with a design enrollment of 515. And you need to remember, design enrollment is just that. The capacity can be much larger. We were talking with the project team about that earlier today. Uh, but part of the feasibility study is looking at all of these options and making sure that we're clear about all of those options. Also, if you look at our five elementary schools, um, you'll see the South and the Wilkins are the oldest of the five schools that we have right now. So today, we're going to have our building committee together. We start with community participation. That's what we're doing this evening. And like I said, this is the third of many community forums that we're going to be doing. I'd like to let the project team go through their presentation, and then um, we can we have a little exercise for you to do some visioning and some dreaming for us, and we'd like to get some information for you there. And like I did say, there is an FAQ which addresses most of the questions that came up during the last community forum, so you'll have that opportunity as well. So let me turn it over to the project team. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, Dr. Good evening, everyone. Carl Franceschi with DRA. Uh, Happy to be back in Stoughton with you, uh, working on this project. Um, we want to run through a little bit about the process. Uh, Dom with, with uh, Vertex will explain the uh, school building authority's process a little bit more, but the, a couple of the key um, portions of that, um, uh, of the first phase of that, I should say, involve looking at existing conditions, and it's sort of the physical conditions of the building. You know, does it, does it keep the water up? Does it keep the heat in? Um, does it support education? 
are, are the uh, spaces appropriately sized and so forth. So we, we uh, have a team of architects, engineers go through the buildings um, and, and assess you know, these various issues um, and look at things like, uh, as was mentioned, uh, the handicap accessibility, ADA issues, the infrastructure, you know, the electrical mechanical systems of these buildings. You know, it's pretty clear at South, that these photos are from South, for those who are familiar with so, um, that, that the systems there are, are at the end of their useful life in that regard. Um, the envelope of the building is, is certainly not up to today's, you know, energy standards uh, as well. Um, and then the overall um, configuration of, of the building and the site is, uh, needs, needs work there. Again, back in the day when it was built, not as many families drove their students to school. There weren't as many buses. Uh, so the, the vehicular and pedestrian circulation is, is an issue over there. That, and, and all of these things would need to be addressed in a renovation addition um, solution to it, which we will study. Um, and we'll also produce a, um, uh, a strategy called a baseline repair. In other words, if we were to fix all these things, um, if we could, and the ADA is the challenge. If we could fix all these things, we'd also assign a cost um, to each of the, the construction costs, to each of those items. So we have a baseline uh, that we could compare with other options. Other options which may improve the educational spaces or the configuration or adjacencies, for instance. Uh, the base repair just fixes things that are broken or brings them up to, to today's standards. Um, and the other thing we look at, as we said, are sort of the spaces in the building. What exists today and what could be? You know, what is more uh, uh, appropriate uh, for the way Stoughton wants to teach and learn in elementary school? Um, and and what, what's happening out there in, in other schools? So, for instance, starting with, you know, space like a, a cafeteria or a cafetorium. Um, they are multi-purpose spaces that can be used for a variety of, of, of purposes. The furniture is more flexible and adaptable. The support systems for drama and music are, um, you know, a little bit upgraded from, from what exists today uh, at, at the South. Things like hallways in, in schools these days are no longer just places to hang up your coat or to pass through. Um, we actually try to make you know learning spaces happen directly in, in the hallways at times, you know using sort of alcoves or nooks and crannies at at the ends uh, where students uh, small groups could break out from the classroom in, in a supervised manner, but you know utilize that space, and so th th they can be transformed from what exists today. Typical classrooms. We know that you know there are a variety of activities that go on in classrooms today. It's not just a, a case of lining up desks, you know, and everybody <coughs> facing a teacher lecturing to a group, particularly at this, this age group. And so um, classrooms need to have different activity zones and, and have the basic, obviously, technology and electrical power and, and heating and ventilating and, and lighting with natural lighting that supports um, learning. Um, here again, you know, here's a, an example of uh, just a nook in a, in a classroom that supports a, a different activity um, uh, within, within that space. The gymnasium itself um, is even smaller than this space and certainly not capable of having, you know, a full-size adult basketball court, which many elementary schools do so that they can be used not just for, you know, uh, phys ed activities, but also after hours by the community. Um, by students and, and adults um, of all ages. And also, you can see the difference in natural light, too, that we try to bring to uh, a lot of spaces these days. Um, doesn't really exist at, at that gym at, at South right now. Um, and the library um, at South has moved a few times um, uh, in its existence there, and it occupies basically a, a, the size of a classroom, which is, um, you know, significantly undersized for e even for a small school of some 225 students uh, it would need to be adjusted but again libraries are another aspect that's really evolved um, in, in recent times as we get more information from computers we don't need as many books in libraries the space gets repurposed and is better used by group activities or classes and, and so forth 
as well as having still computer resources to, to access those areas. Um, and we often find smaller little private um, study rooms off of um, libraries these days so that the library itself might be a little bit noisier than we're used to, but the, there are quiet spaces off of them. And also spaces like uh, technology or, uh, or a maker space, a project area, uh, often associated with libraries these days. So there's a lot of um, uh, improvements that could be made and we'll be asking you about your, your hopes and dreams for, for this project too. And then outdoors in the buildings too these days, we've learned, especially from the pandemic, if people take advantage of outdoor spaces for learning, it, it certainly can be designed in from the start. And there's room for improvement um, uh, at the south site for that to, to happen. Um, here's some examples of, you know, not just play happens outside, but learning areas can happen outside too. Um, with a few, you know, simple moves of providing some seating, providing some uh, uh, group uh, uh, assembly areas uh, outdoors as well. And then, as I mentioned, I'm Don Tiberi from Vertex can talk about the MSPA process. Thank you, Carl. Good evening, and thank you for coming out. Uh, as, as Dr. Rapp said, uh, we were part of the team in South uh, for the high school project, so we're very happy to be back and helping out through this process. Uh, in, in partnership with the Mass School Building Authority that gives us a percentage of funding towards this program, they, they lay out basically a template for us to follow when every project is like that. So right now we're in the very first phase that's highlighted the uh, preliminary design program. Uh, and, and as Dr. Rapp talked about and, and, and uh, Mr. Franceschi talked about, is that we're in the process of looking at the spaces, we're looking at uh, existing conditions of, of the school, um, what, what we'll need for development, and also the site options. Another thing that we're in the midst of, and we're working with the district and the principals and also all the teachers and some of the parents as far as the educational program, you know, and, and how we get to a 21st century ed program. I'm not saying that you don't have a 21st century, but with a new, a new facility, you can do more as far as education goes. I just want to emphasize that each step of the way, we collect, some, you know, we summarize, collect information, we make our best uh, decisions going forward. We present uh, options, and each step of the way, we review that with the school building committee, and we review that with the school committee before we submit to the MSBA. So in this particular time period, we will be collecting all this information on the, what we call the PDP, and we'll be submitting on April 4th. In the meantime, we will have a a draft to the school building committee and to the school committee and then a finalized copy uh, by March for approval. Then we go and distill that further when we get into a little more information. We'll go into what they call a preferred schematic report and this is when we start to really narrow everything down to our preferences and we'll be submitting that by the end of June and by that time we'll have an idea of what the future building will look like, what we're renovating, adding on, or a brand new building and the location. And that would be submitted by, uh, to the MSBA by January of 2024. June. I'm sorry, June of 2024. I just wanted to give you kind of a milestone chart. Uh, as you can see, we were just talking about those dates. Um, the goal is to have, you know, if everything goes true to form in June, we'll start doing what they call schematic design of the building. And we'll have, at that time, we'll start doing estimating of the cost of that, that building. Uh, we'll have that ready for the town meeting vote in uh, May of 2024, followed by, you know, uh, obviously the town. Um, if everything goes well and it gets approved, uh, we'll start to design and, and uh, we will have a bid date of June of 2025. And if all goes real well uh, with the market, uh, we will have students arriving in the brand new school by September of 2027. Okay. So I wanted uh, to share with you a little bit about uh, a couple of the steps that are happening right now as we talk about this first phase. Uh, we're looking at um, a variety of options and we, uh, come with no preconceptions as to whether it's going to be a new school or a renovation addition, although 
you know, that may, may narrow down fairly um, soon, but also um, the location of, of the building too. The, the state asks us to consider, you know, um, a broad net of a uh, long list of, of possibilities. And so you can see we, we identified up to 14 parcels, but uh, once we applied criteria fairly quickly here, it narrowed the list down to about three that are in the immediate vicinity of the existing South School as to where this project will take place. Um, there's, uh, if we look at that closer, there's the South School itself, that's parcel 13 on Ash Street there. That's the, the uh, separate parcel that just the building is on. Then behind it is parcel 14, uh, which is the athletic field uh, behind the, the, the uh, school. Uh, it does have a power line cutting through it there. Um, as well, but it is all contiguous and it's obviously owned by the town already. And then there's another parcel, number one, not quite contiguous, but it's separated by uh, a paper street and, and some private land, but the town acquired that property in the 1960s for school purposes. It has never been developed, it's a wooded site. It does have a little bit of frontage on Park Street, so it has some access there. It actually has a bit of access on, on the adjacent um, suburban uh, uh, subdivision street there too. Uh, but that would not be a, a main entrance. That might be for pedestrians or emergency access. But um, you can see the relative sizes of these parcels. So these are the three parcels that we'll be studying various configurations of building on. Both the, the smaller replacement school of uh, design enrollment of 225 as well as a consolidated school with an enrollment of about 515 uh, students and see how they fit and configure. And, and that, that will be all part of this first submission to the state is just the variety of options that the town is considering. And then we'll move forward in, in the next phase in the spring prior to June of narrowing that down to one preferred option. And that preferred option will be not just about you know, the building configuration but also about the educational program and the issue of consolidation uh, as well. So there is this sort of decision tree to get us to June uh, there as we first of all consider, as we said, both addition renovation and new construction on multiple sites. And then we consider, um, you know, whether it's a larger school or, or the um, replacement size school as well. So that there's sort of a, a lot of permutations here of possibilities that um, we try to deal with and, and recommend thinking about in, a, in an objective way. You know, sort of an unemotional, let's uh, identify some criteria that we can evaluate these options. How, you know, obviously cost is an important one, but how does it satisfy the educational plan? How does it, you know, deal with disruption and, um, and implementation, construction uh, sequence? Uh, how, what was the impact on abutters? Um, what are the, you know, the advantages of the building's configuration? Um, things like that um, would be uh, addressed in sort of a matrix fashion. And so, as Don mentioned, one of the other activities that's going on right now is developing an educational plan for this project. And, and that's done regardless if it's going to be a, an addition renovation or a new school, and regardless if, uh, regardless if it's a replacement school or, or the new you know, consolidated school, um, it still addresses how does teaching and learning want to happen here, here in Stoughton. Um, and so the process is led by, by our team and our educational consultant, uh, David Stephen. You can see him in that photograph there. And there's a team of about 35 people participating. I think some of you in the audience are part of that. You can see it's sort of a broad uh, category of, of not just teachers, not just school administrators and leaders, but, but also parents and, and uh, uh, a few uh, building committee members, design team members as well, uh, looking at you know, education, thinking about um, how is it going on now? How would we like it to be going on in the future? looking at some trends, looking at um, uh, other uh, precedents in, in other schools, um, and trying to grab sort of the best ideas of those and bringing those together in, in a plan. And ultimately, the plan is sort of crafted by the uh, school administrators, particularly the principals involved, and um, 
uh, Wilkins School and the South School are the, are the uh, primary authors of this educational plan. But that becomes kind of a guideline for us going forward in, in this project. We don't lose sight of the fact that this is about education. It's not simply about fixing a school that's old and, and has, some, has some deficiencies. And here's you know, some preliminary information. We have another session tomorrow night, the, the third session. You can see some of the, the, the key words that have come out of uh, people's thoughts about what should this new school be. It should you know, encourage collaboration, um, it'd be engaging for the students, um, inclusive, welcoming, uh, those kinds of, of uh, adjectives. And then some of the ideas that were, were highlighted um, in, the, in the visioning sessions uh, that we have looked at and resulted in, again, selecting some of the better ideas and seeing what's most important using some polling um, uh, software to find out uh, what rises to the top in people's thinking. Um, and so this will get documented, it actually gets presented to the state as part of a, uh, the submission and with comments back and then as we said we use it as, as kind of guiding principles and, and a roadmap going forward in, in designing the new school. Um, so as, as was mentioned, this is the third uh, uh, session we've had as a community forum, and there'll be many more um, throughout the spring as we move forward and, and beyond uh, as well. And there are a number of ways for, for people to stay in touch with the project. I know there are some things maybe you've heard for the first time, and that's good, I guess, that you're hearing them. We, we want to get more people familiar with what's going on here. We want this to be a, a community project and, and look for, for feedback. So. Um, there, there is a project website. Um, as we said, we documented some of the questions we got at the first forum, and we've already uh, put together, there's a printed version here tonight, if you want to grab those, but there's an online version of frequently asked questions. We want to add to those um, with whatever we hear tonight, and keep that as a sort of living document going forward so that anybody who maybe comes late to the project can still um, kind of backtrack and, and uh, have their questions answered. And then the other thing we'd like to do tonight is, um, and I think we're a small enough group that we could sort of just do this um, collectively here, um, is just get your thoughts on these four topic centers, or more, but um, I'm sure you came with some thoughts in mind, um, uh, maybe some concerns, but hopefully some, some hopes and dreams or, um, or things that you'd be excited about in, a, in this uh, project. Um, so we'd like to hear that. We're collecting those and again um, trying to build a consensus on, on where the town wants to head with this project. 